and welcome to another edition of the Schmozcast. I am Anthony Danu. We got Chandler, Andre, and Aiden in the studio. How are we doing, fellas? Doing good tonight. Anyone else? I'm yeah. doing wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and I am doing absolutely glorious. Wonderful. All right. So a uh, lot to get to today. We got some breaking-ish news. Is that fair to say? I think so. What do we, what do we it's, got, it's, Chan? It's, it's not quite breaking anymore because the announcement was made on Raw Monday night that WWE will be having their first ever all-women's pay-per-view uh, called Evolution, which is a huge deal. And super awesome and super well des- well deserved, and I am very very excited about this. Uh, Andre, how do you feel about uh, a women's only pay per view? Has it has it taken too long for this to happen, or should I mean it should be celebrated regardless? But uh, is this something that we should have had quite a long time ago, or is, do we now have the depth of talent that we maybe never had before that made this a possibility? Um, yes and no. I, I guess the in WWE. I mean, I guess it's happened other places, but in WWE, it should have happened a while ago in the sense of you feel like it's something that should have been done, but from a practical sense of the roster, yes, this is the, the absolute best time for for this with the, the depth of talent that you have in all three brands of uh, WWE, those three brands being SmackDown, Raw, and NXT. Good stuff. Um, Aiden, your thoughts on an all-women's pay-per-view? I think it's better late than never, but uh, in uh, how I would have wished this whole thing would have gone down is we would have had the respect that we have for the women's division now. Like if they treated them the same that they did that they do now, like ten years ago, fifteen years mm-hmm. ago, because it was so bad back then. Because when I first got into it, divas were when they called them divas, it was almost taken <laughs> as a joke, and it's like. You couldn't even have a five-minute match, and now they're main eventing pay-per-views, and so it's more than fitting to have an all-women's pay-per-view that will, I know, will kick ass. Yeah, it's definitely is. They, they were like you said back ten, fifteen years ago. They were an afterthought at best, and now it's it's awesome to see that they are getting the the respect and the uh, the spots that they deserve on the card, and getting now an entire card to themselves. Let's talk about the depth of this the talent pool that they have right now in WWE. How, and I also want to get your guys' thoughts on how much like the, the four horsewomen had to do with this going back four years when you started the WWE Network and you had... Uh, Becky Lynch wasn't huge at that time, but she, over time she climbed up to where you saw you have Sasha, Charlotte, and Bayley. And, I mean, so many of the other girls too. Alexa Bliss, we, like we always say, is, has taken the biggest jump from... Uh, the the not the superstar shakeup but the the draft for the bl- uh, the brand split a couple of years ago and I, this is the deepest pool of women they've probably ever had. I mean, just yeah, top to bottom talent wise, they it, it it doesn't come close. You have the four horsewomen, you have the iconics, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, you have Ember Moon, you have Alexa Bliss, as you mentioned, even people a couple names like Alicia Fox and Natalia that have been around for quite some time. You know, you have, you have them, you have Naomi. There's just, there's so many names, so many, so many women, women wrestlers that they have right now that it just makes sense. And that, that was all just the main roster that I named. Not to mention NXT, you have Nikki Cross, you have Kyrie Sane, the NXT Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler, Bianca Belair, all of the competitors from the first May Young Classic, and those who are going to be coming back for the second one this year, and also uh, the 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 new the new set of women that are going to be coming in to compete in this year's May Young uh, May Young Classic. It's just it's it's unbelievable. Um, okay, so let's get predictions for our main event. Let's say it's going to be a singles match doesn't necessarily have to be for a title but who do you guys want to see in the main event and i guess a kind of a sub question to that would be is it one person from each brand or do you give is it like a sasha bailey situation where that story is has been there for so long or what do you want what do you want to do andre see you shaking your head it's gonna be i don't know who her opponent's gonna be but it's gonna be a ronda rousey match i would be shocked if it's not i would say I thought they would do it at WrestleMania, but I think this pay-per-view might be deemed slightly bigger than WrestleMania for the women. So I think they might actually pull the trigger on this match. And this is just speculation, fan speculation, whatever. But Charlotte and Ronda Rousey, that would be my pick. 
that's who I'd want to see. That's who I think they're going to do for the main event. I don't know if there's going to be a title on the line because they're two different shows. Maybe at that point there's either a trade or a shakeup or they're both champions of their respective brand and they just do a, a champion versus champion. But then that would defeat the purpose of having each title defended. So you'd have to have a brand uh, jumping from one of them or the other uh, in the in the interim. But I think that would be a great main event. Anything with Ronda Rousey is going to get is going to get views and get and get viewers because uh, it'll be on the network, right? Pedal pull butts in seats. Pedal butts in seats. <laughs> yeah, I think that outside of Ronda Rousey, which Andre, I think you hit the, the nail on the head. She's most likely going to be in the main event. Whether who, who she's facing is yet to be seen, but she's most likely going to be in the main event. But before you said that, I was thinking maybe a fatal four way with the four horse women. I think that's the way to go. That would be very fun too. Uh, I kind of, you know, I almost wouldn't see mind seeing Ronda Rousey open the mat, just open the show. Like her music hits first. I think that would just set the crowd on fire. But Aiden, it absolutely would. Aiden, what do you think for a, a main event for this? I was actually thinking the exact same thing with Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte because you have one of the biggest stars to enter WWE with Ronda Rousey and then having arguably one of the best women wrestlers on the roster in Charlotte. And I think that in of itself is a selling point. And not only that, being the main event of an all-women's pay-per-view is just icing on the cake. And I think you can go back to that at WrestleMania also. I don't think that you... It's not like if you burn it now, you can't have it later. I right. Think it could be the beginning of something. Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't have an issue with that either way. And you know, I just thought of something. Um, we some somewhere a, a way that we could kind of meet in the middle with all of what we just said with what we think the main event could be. Um, the all four of the four horsewomen from MMA are under the WWE umbrella Survivor Series style match. We could, we could, we could have the the four horsewomen of the M- of MMA versus the four horsewomen of the WWE. That could be a thing. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, do we have a location set for this? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, and September is the plan. Right October. Now? October. Okay. Yep. So this will this take the place of Hell in a Cell, which is kind of funny. We t- we talked last week about how we wanted to eliminate a couple pay per views, and we were unanimous. We were all on the same. Yeah, page for with the most for the most part. Yeah, we. That's kind of where we it looks like were going gonna, with it. it looks like it's going to be in Uniondale, New York, and it's October 28th, so I guess maybe it will take the place that, of Hell that's in a Cell. Right, that's really right at that time yeah. where we would get Hell in a Cell. It's yeah. usually halfway through or close to the end. And I sure hope it replaces it. <laughs> so, yeah, that'd be great. And you know what? Do it once a year. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, what other things come up when you guys think about this? Who do you who do you want to see come out first? I, I Go ahead, Andre. Oh, no, I was going to say something completely different. I was going to say they could or should or maybe they still will women's tag team championship i was hoping i was kind of hoping that was the announcement but i wouldn't mind that to happen anyway i think why not you know if you've got the talent that they have and they keep bringing in more and the way they've okay so part of of it i think is that they not only are pushing the women they also took their time in developing them and had the strong core that let them get to that this point and I think if you keep restocking, similar to a, a good baseball team that just has minor league players ready to go, that and, and NXT has proven to be that. I think that you can do a tag team division. I think you can do this event yearly, if not maybe even more often, another network special in the spring or something like that. I think the, the possibilities are endless right now. Do you guys want to see a separate weekly show, or is that too much? Is that too divisive in some ways for your for your roster? And you're not giving the crowd enough different things. If you not that it would be only guys on Raw or SmackDown, but you know maybe E gets their own uh, uh, their version of uh, the main event or Superstars or Velocity and Sunday Night Heat. The, all, you know these Shotgun Saturday Night, one of those secondary shows where you, we can still see Charlotte and Ronda Rousey on Raw and SmackDown, but maybe. We do get some of the up-and-coming NXT girls on cable television prior to them going main roster, and then maybe they face some of the main roster girls like a Naomi or Iconics or, or what have you. I Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I think that, especially on Monday Night Raw, there's plenty of time to have yeah. to have more women's matches with, with it being three hours long. Um not to say that I'd be opposed to them having their own show because I absolutely, I absolutely would would think that that would be a, a cool thing and it's a, it's a really that's a really cool idea to have them have their own kind of secondary show and then to have kind of the the more main event uh, women on Raw and SmackDown, but 
yeah, I don't know. I think that I think that you don't necessarily need to have them have their own weekly show. But if it were to happen, I would absolutely not be opposed to it. I don't think they need their own show. I, I just think they. I mean, they're being utilized a lot, a lot better now. I think they can be utilized more on Raw. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that they could do on Raw. But um, that's a whole other whole other topic for her, whole other day. But no, I don't think they need another show to showcase them. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I think it'd be great as long as it wouldn't like take them off the the main one of the the two main shows completely because i would almost feel like that's a little bit of a like a demotion in a sense like because i kind of feel like they did that with the with the cruiserweights they took the cruiserweights off raw completely and they have their own show which is great but it also makes it feel like the cruiserweights they don't care as much about the cruiserweights (coughs) which i don't think that's a i mean i care about the cruiserweights I don't know if WWE does as much as the main roster, and I don't want the same thing to happen with the women. So that's part of the reason why I wouldn't want a, a, a woman show. But uh, if they do, it'd be great. I'd watch it because, you know, it'd be good. I would just watch it with the hopes of them not taking them off the main roster and not making them second-class citizens and having them still be the the show, which I think they would because I, I don't think WWE would completely take them off Raw or SmackDown. Aiden, your thoughts on this? Uh, a separate possible show for the women or just really load up Raw a little bit more? The concept is nice in theory, but then I fear that it, they would suffer the same fate as to a Five Live and main event where it, they're, they, they're good enough shows in themselves, but nobody really watches them as much as people should. Like, 205 Live is great with the Cruiserweights being some of the best talent on the roster, and but yet they're uh, subjugated to an hour after SmackDown. And like you said, we have plenty of time on Raw for them to show off all their stuff. And plus, they even fill the time with the pointless stuff that we don't need to see. So why not fill that time by putting on a great women's match for everyone to see? That, and they don't need to recap the first 20 minutes 18 times during Raw. Exactly. <laughs> and when I say recap, I mean they show, like, the whole segment. Jesus Christ. They have the time. They might as well use it for something good. Yep. Let's get on that for a second. Um, listening to a lot of 83 Weeks, Eric Bischoff always talks about how do I make WW or WCW different than what's what was happening in WWF. And he talked to, you know, obviously the, the cruiserweights was a huge thing. And he made sure, I think it was at the 8 o'clock hour when when uh, they when they went to three hours, that the 8 o'clock hour, you knew every week that that was going to be one of your top cruiserweight matches. And since 205 Live has left Monday Night Raw, it has been a much better product. But I think Raw has actually really suffered without having these one or two good cruiserweight matches. And I know they weren't super meaningful a lot of the time, or sometimes they would be too meaningful to the point where 205 Live would would hurt from having their main event taken away in some cases. Uh, but I'd like to see 205 Live, I'd like to see the cruiserweights back on Monday Night Raw, or if SmackDown ends up going to three hours on a Friday switch in January when, when, the, when they go to Fox as opposed to USA. I think that you make that switch to... I'd like to see cruiserweights back on one of the shows, especially if you're going three hours. I think you're hurting the product by not showcasing these guys in a completely different style than than what we get for those three hours. And as as Andre said, way too many replays. Why why not get a good cruiserweight match, ten to fifteen minutes tops of fast paced action, even if it is a, a tag match? Or and to me, actually, if you're going to do the six man tag as they've been known for for so long on Raw. I'd rather be cruiserweights and even go to that almost that Mexican style where someone goes out of the ring with a flip than someone else is legal. Like I'd, li- I'd almost like to see those rules change like that, similar to what you get in CMLL or AAA. Yeah, I think that that would seeing the cruiserweights on either Raw or SmackDown would do nothing but help that division. Um, it's one of one of the biggest detriments of Two Hundred Five Live being where it is is uh, be the, the spot that it's being in after SmackDown is you can look out into the crowd. We've been there. Yeah. We've been in the crowd and seen it happen. Half the half the crowd leaves, and I feel like if you showcase them on on either Raw or SmackDown, you let people know that this this is what these guys can do. This is what they're capable of, and this is why you should stay to watch their show. If you were to still have their own dedicated 205 Live show after SmackDown, so I think that that would it would do nothing but help the division, and that's that's my main thing. They there there needs to be some way that they showcase the cruiserweights so that people know that they are worth sticking around for because they are. Yeah, I agree with that 100. percent You took the words out of my mouth. They 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 could use Raw as a 
as a showcase for people to put eyeballs on that product and say, well, maybe I should download the network. I get 30 days free. Let me check out 205 Live. But I don't know. Yeah, it would be more beneficial for them to have a match on Raw and have a match on SmackDown, one each, and then have it be like a teaser. Like, hey, check this out. You want more of this? Get at the network and then watch the 205 Live. It works out for everyone. Get great matches and WWE gets subscriptions. Yeah, but no, we have to show them. We have to show them that for the eighth time, Roman Reigns throwing Jinder Mahal through the paper wall again. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just think that they would benefit so much from getting them back. And also, you don't just because someone is a cruiserweight doesn't mean that you know a, a Braun Strowman can't be walking past a uh, a Noam Dar in the in the hallway backstage and bump into him, and then that's and, that's, and, and then that's a fun match. You know, like Jarek, there were guys in the w, in WCW cruiserweights that that obviously came out and flourished. And I know the the weight thing is has changed; it's down at least twenty pounds from from what it was, but. Still, you're stopping them from not only getting the exposure, but also having the chance to be a mid card. You know, which I which I think that Cedric Alexander is someone that could easily be on on a, in a mid card situation on Raw as, as we speak. Or I don't know. I just think that uh, they've they've misused the talent there quite a bit, especially in terms of filling time on Raw. That. I, you know, you're kind of capping where how far these guys can come, and I think that it would be more fun to to get them on on Raw. Well, you guys, uh, you guys ready to get some trivia in here? Let's do it. Okay, so oh, before we do that, I just can I can I just kind of run down what matches we are are assumingly know sure. the potential matches yes. of of uh, the Evolution pay per view. So both the Raw and Women's SmackDown championships will be on the line. The NXT Women's Championship will be on the line. Uh, it looks like the final of this year's May Young Classic will happen at Evolution, and it could be possibly. Got to take this with a grain of salt because I'm looking at Wikipedia, but the, those those first three or four I know for sure they've announced. WWE themselves have announced those, but this last one I'm not entirely sure. But it looks like we could be crowning the. Uh, the UK women's champion as well at evolution. So, I mean, just those matches alone is I'm hooked. I, I, I'm, I'd I'm watch just for, if it, if it were only those five matches, I would watch that, but and there's going to be so much more to it. And I'm predicting there will, by the time that pay-per-view comes around, be a women's tag team championship. I just think the 180 and the Sasha Bailey story just to me is a red flag that, okay, they're doing something different. So you think that's going to happen on Raw is will be the spot for women's tag team? I think it's gonna flow. I think it's gonna be like the men's tag team championships back in the the days of hmm. uh, Jericho. Okay. And uh, who else did Jericho roll with? That he had all those, the, all those tag team runs where he would be on both shows. Jericho and why? I can't. Remember. He uh, Jericho won it five times with five different partners. So, but at, but you're talking about at that specific time. Uh, who was it? I can't think of it. I know there was Show Miz, but that's... Show Miz and Jera Show. Yeah, I thought it was go. Miz, yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Um, okay, so are we ready for some trivia? Let's do it. Okay. I, it really is important to me that you guys keep away from my screen. I will be... I'm going to turn and, and keep an eye on you guys. So if you guys can, turn away from my screen. I'm a heel, though. So. Yeah, you are a heel. And um, you're a frony. And I'm a, and I'm a frony. I'm a, I'm a bad, bad frony. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not going to look, but I don't trust my... my opponents here all right so this is how it's going to work i'm going to ask a question you guys are all going to get a shot to answer uh, andre's going to go first chandler will go second and aiden will go third um do you guys should we pull up some fun just instrumental reggae or something just to have it on in the background yeah reggae show well you have know you, what have you heard about that uh, yeah have you heard right, about yeah. that reggae <laughs> show good uh, dude four to seven minutes yeah tops good stuff that's all, all you need um, Let's well, play uh, Roman Reigns' theme over no, and over. No, no, I'm just gonna get angry. <laughs> I break my computer. Oh man, I won't be able to focus. So we're answering. Is it one one answer per question? Are we gonna wrote? I mean, I don't understand I'm, how we're doing points. Yep. Here. So there, we're gonna go through, and everyone will get a point for the right answer. I'm not. When you answer a question, everyone's gonna get the same question. So, Andre, you are somewhat at a disadvantage. This is more of an age thing, though. With a Aiden's going to go last because then if he has he has the choice to potentially use one of your guys' answers, does that what? make sense? Here's what I, here's what I'll say. Okay, so the question might be: How many tag team partners has Jericho won the tag team championship with? 
how many different partners? So you would say five. five. Then Chandler might guess four. Then then Aiden will guess his. And then at the end, I will go through and, and tell you guys what uh, the answers to the questions were. Oh, okay. So it's, so it's important that you guys also kind of remember what your answers were when we go through. I think we need to each question the for first person needs to be different. Otherwise, I'm at a disadvantage this whole time. You are at a disadvantage, but that's because you and I have an ongoing rivalry, and I thought that this was the Oh, so you're the heel evil. GM. I, I see. Yes. I got to overcome the odds, so I am the baby face here. Hey, I'm at a natural yeah. disadvantage. Right. You guys have been watching so. longer than me. He's a natural disadvantage. <laughs> there you go. Um, we'll, get, we'll get some wrestling music in the background. Hopefully this oh, will, this is this will keep song. us on the uh, keep us on YouTube. I'm gonna start chanting Adam Cole baby at random yeah. points just so you guys. My know. boy Kyle O'Reilly. Okay, so eyes off the screen, away from me. Um, there there are two main themes here. Okay, we just celebrated the 20 year anniversary of King of the Ring 1998. That is gonna be theme one. Theme two, we have SummerSlam coming up, and SummerSlam main events is going to be the second theme. Are we all ready? Let's do it. All right, starting with Andre and then going around. Uh, we're starting with King of the Ring 1998. Uh, Andre, what was the stipulation for the main event? What was the main event? That was Stone Cold and uh, Kane First Blood, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Chandler, your answer. What was the stipulation for the main event at King of the Ring 1998? God, I have no idea. I'm going to say Falls Count Anywhere. And Aiden. Of course, the first question was from before I was born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ring of Fire match. Uh, those are all good guesses. Do you guys want me to give the answer after each question? Yes. Okay. Uh, the answer was first blood match. And actually, I will give the answers because the answer will oftentimes lead into the next question. Do I get an extra point for getting the competitors right? Um, no, because that was part of actually how I was trying to throw you off, but you get credit for that. I mean, well, you get a attaboy and some kudos or whatever. <laughs> Pat on the back. Um, okay, so uh, name one wrestler from the opening match at King of the Ring 1998. One wrestler. I should know this because I just listened to the Pritchard show on this. And Come I have on. not watched the Pritchard show. I came up with these questions completely I outside I of that. To it, but. Yeah, our, yeah, literal Martinez here, folks. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Billy Kidman. I don't know. Billy Kidman in 1998 no, in wait, WWF? No, 98, 98. Never mind. I'm thinking of a different one. Hang on. Oh, hang on. that? No, nope, no. Nope. Nope. I'm going I'm to retract that. Only because, because you're going first am I allowing this Thank you. garbage. Who, okay. <laughs> Ken Shamrock. Uh, Chandler. Uh, I'm going to say Steve Blackman and Aiden. Well, since Andre got it right last time, I have to go with his answer, Ken Shamrock. <laughs> All right. The answer was it was Kai. It was actually a tag match. Kai and Ty. Oh, versus the right. headbangers, that's but right. but uh, Taka Michinoku was actually with the headbangers at this point. Um, it got like a negative one star or something like that. Minus <laughs> five stars. Minus five stars. Uh, okay, moving on. The King of the Ring champion was uh, in 1998 was Ken Shamrock. Name the other three who made it to the final four. So Ken Shamrock is one of the four. And you have to name the other three. So give me three competitors. Owen Hart. <coughs> uh, Dan Severin. And a third competitor. Oh, Jiminy Crickets. Triple H, I don't know. Uh, moving on to Chandler. Three competitors who were in the final four, King of the Ring, 1998. Ken Shamrock was, was the winner. So he beat out someone in the championship, and then the round before that, those three matches combined took place at King of the Ring, 1998. The Rock. Uh, maybe Mick Foley. And a third... Andre, you said Triple H, right? Yes. Yeah. 
I'm going to go with Triple H. I mean, I, I kind of feel like he might have been in the final, so those are my three. Moving on to Aiden. Three competitors from 1998 in the King uh, in the King of the Ring tournament. Ken, Shram Ken Shamrock was the winner. I'm going to give Aiden a little hint, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they they each got one. They each got one person correct. They each got one wrestler correct. Okay. I know who I got correct. I'm going with The Rock, Triple H. I do, I do not know. Uh, okay, Very, you guys did a pretty good job here. So the Ken Shamrock beat The Rock in the finals. Uh, the Rock beat Dan the Beast Severn That's who I guess. in the first round. And Jeff Jarrett was beat by Ken Shamrock. So <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, Jarrett, Dan the Beast Severn, and Jeff Jarrett. See, when um, I said Owen Hart, I meant Jeff Jarrett. Uh, Jeff, yeah, right. Okay, uh, Jeff Jarrett, uh, or I'm sorry, Triple H, by the way. Triple H was on guest commentary during the championship match. He won it the year before. So Triple H was actually... Uh, giving doing guest commentary during The Rock versus Ken Shamrock, which was the final. Uh, if you want to peek into what Triple H was like back in the day or some of the stuff that we give him crap about for that whole Booker T rivalry, man, go back and watch some of this because he, uh, China, who is apparently fluent in Spanish, joined the Spanish announce team. And so they each go to, China goes to the Spanish announce team. Triple H goes with uh, Michael Cole, I think. And. Uh, uh, or no, it was uh, Jr. And, and King, of course. Um, but you, you go back and check this out. It's it's pretty wild. Some of the stuff that Triple H says. Um, and then also, uh, there's a great rock promo with Michael Cole. That's just uh, well, it's a fun one. I might have to include that on the show when we when we add it on YouTube. All right, moving on. That main event that we talked about was Kane versus Stone Cold. It was a first blood match. The question is, what was different about Kane's ring attire? He had full sleeves, if I'm not mistaken. Chandler? The colors were inverted, so what was black was red, and what was red was black. Aiden? Well, judging from Andre's reaction, I wanted to go with uh, the colors inverted. I'm changing my answer, too. Just kidding. I'm going to roll with what I said. The answer is the left arm was covered. Andre, you are actually correct. Ah. Uh, you're thinking of uh, WrestleMania 2001 is when Kane inverted the colors. I couldn't remember if so it was then or later. Because, uh, because it was a first blood match, this was a huge advantage for Kane because none of his body was really exposed outside of maybe his left hand. Um, okay, so here's the other stipulation of the match that you guys have to, have to tell me about. What did Kane vow to do if he lost the match? I got this. What is it? <clears throat> If I lose, <laughs> I will set myself on fire. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, Chandler, your answer? I mean, it's Kane, so that that <laughs> that, <laughs> that makes sense. I think that he was he was going to set himself on fire if he lost. And Aiden. Yeah, he was going to set himself on fire like he does every day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right before breakfast. Um, very good. Okay, so he did set... He, Do the, I get a bonus for doing the voice box? Sure, I'll give you a half a point. Oh, yeah. Um, the WWF Tag Team Champion New Age Outlaws faced off against the NWA Tag Team Champions. Who were they? The NWA Tag Team Champions in 1998. King of the Ring. Represented by Jim Cornette. I believe it was the Rock and Roll Express or, oh, it was one of those old school teams. Midnight Express. All right. He's going with the Midnight Express. Uh, um, Chandler, go ahead. It was the new Midnight Express, which was, if I'm not mistaken, Bob Holly and who would become Bart Gunn. And now Aiden. New Midnight Express. You guys are right. I, I was going to ask for you guys to be a little bit more specific because they went by Bombastic Bart or Bob and Bodacious Bart, but uh, that is correct. It is the new Midnight Express with James E. Cornette. Um, right. What city was 1998 King of the Ring held in? Holy, I should know this. I'm going to say Nassau Coliseum. I don't know. 
It, which is what city? I don't know. Wherever city that stadium's in. It's Long Island, New York. Long that is Island, incorrect. Whoops, uh, sorry. Uh, moving well, on. Well, that's not my answer. Chandler. Then. Um, it's going to be Chicago, Illinois. Moving on to Chandler. <laughs> um, what city? What city? I'm gonna say. I mean, I feel like this is completely wrong, but Boston. And uh, Aiden, before you go, I'd like to give you a big hint that this crowd came under fire recently after a after a, a pay per view. Would that be Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? That would it be would. that would be correct. Okay, so uh, this build, just giving them a countdown. Uh, this building, yeah, uh, this building that w- the King of the Ring 1998 was held in has two very prominent nicknames. Can you tell me either one of those nicknames or both? You get extra points for giving me both. Uh, but one is more regularly considered than the other. But either way, if you give me both, you get two points. If you give me one, you still get a point. The Iron Man City, I don't know. I, I it, have no clue. It's, so the, it's the building. The bu- You're telling me what the building um, is called. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to think of something okay. because I can't think of it because I have no clue what the building is called. So that's my answer, and it's not going to be right because I don't right. have any other guesses. Building, it's in Pittsburgh. Um, I mean, I don't think this is where it is, but I'm I'm gonna say the Joe. Um, and moving on to Aiden. I got another nicknames of stadiums now. That's That's right. I can't remember the names of from '98. Nicknames of stadiums from '98, which was before you were born. (laughs) (laughs) Great. You don't know this. No, I don't know this out for some <laughs> odd reason. If you consider an indoor sports team, this that might help you. What was the building's nickname in Pittsburgh at the 1998 King of the Ring? The only thing I know about Pittsburgh is I think the Penguins play there, so I'll just go with Ice Rink. That is a really good guess. So the building's nickname was either the Igloo, or the house that Mario Lemieux built. Either one of those would have been a correct answer. Yeah, when did Styles. Mario Lemieux wrestle? Because I don't remember him. I, uh, I would say that <laughs> he wasn't a wrestler, but apparently he built this great stadium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he literally built it. No, no. <laughs> Not the house that AJ Styles <laughs> built. That's right. Um, okay, so still, this is the last question on Royal. Uh, I'm sorry, King of the Ring 1998. This is also quite a, not a not quite a wrestling question, but I had to include it because it is one of my favorites. What 1995 Jean Claude Van Damme movie takes place at the igloo? Sudden death, baby. It's not baby's not at the end of it. Just sudden death. I honestly have no clue, and the confidence that Andre said that with, I'm gonna say sudden death. And Aiden. <clears throat> I've never even seen a John Claude Van Damme movie. <laughs> All I know is he can death. do a split. Yeah, that's right. Uh, sudden death. Sudden death is correct. Uh, if you guys remember, Andre, do you know the premise of this film? I can't remember exactly what happens, but I know there's a bomb in the stadium, and he has to defuse it, and he ends up having to <laughs> go undercover as the goalie. <laughs> but then he gets put in the game, and he makes the save of the year. <laughs> And then he goes and he defuses the bomb. Sorry, spoiler alert. I thought you said you didn't remember. You just spoiler described like the entire movie. That's so but great. I don't remember how the bomb got there. That's it's the whole point. One of my favorite premises for a ridiculous action movie ever. Um, <laughs> my goodness. With Scott. Jean-Claude. That's in order to get off the ice to get back into the back in order to defuse the bomb, he had to start a fight with another player, too. That's so good. Gosh. Yeah, ex- yeah. I'm glad you included that question, Tony. See, I told you. I was like, I know it's not wrestling, but that, that's just a fun one right there. Um, okay, we are done with King of the Ring trivia. Way to go, fellas. Now we are on, on to the round of SummerSlam and SummerSlam main events specifically. Uh, before there we get know. started, I do want to give a hint. One hint that will help you potentially down the road with, with some of the questions about SummerSlam main events, okay, without me having to really spell it out for you. But here is the hint. <clears throat> Heath Slater has main evented a SummerSlam. Once again, Heath Slater has main evented a SummerSlam. Okay, we're going to just keep that in your brain as we go, okay? All right. The Rock. Question one. The Rock main evented uh, SummerSlam in 2000 and 2001. 
what two championships were on the line in those two matches. So The Rock in 2000 and 2001 main evented SummerSlam. Both years, they, he wrestled for two different belts. Name those two belts, starting with Andre again. The W W. How, how I, I'm not gonna be mad okay. if you. I'm not gonna mad if you don't get the F out or whatever. Because I don't remember what. But I prefer you happened. did. <laughs> the WWF <laughs> and the WCW world title. Oh man, that sounds. That sounds spot on. I was going to say, and I'm going to stick with mine, but I think that's actually right. One was a tag titles, and then the other one was the WWF championship. And Aiden, what two belts did The Rock wrestle for in the main events of SummerSlam 2000 and 2001? Two different belts. Yeah, when I was two and three years old. That's right. The ripe, ripe age to watch The Rock wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> Jog that memory, brother. It's right before he was the Scorpion King. Poor Aiden should I get think like he, double. I think he was always the Scorpion right. King at heart. That's right. You got is that fair? You know what? I'll give. Uh, should we do that? Aiden gets double points, and then to make it fair for Andre, should we cha change it to Chandler going first? Now? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, yeah, sure. The, and oh, si yeah. since there's more SummerSlam questions, I might switch back to Andre later, just because I do have a lot of SummerSlam questions. But we'll we'll do our best to even it out as we go. I'm just gonna throw it out. I'm not really because I don't know. So uh, in 2000, he wrestled for the WWF Intercontinental Championship, and 2001, WWF World Championship. All very good guesses. Uh, in 2000, he was in a triple threat match, I believe, for the WWF Championship. In 2001, he wrestled for the WCW Championship. This brings me to my next question. Chandler, starting with you, then going to Andre, then Aiden. Who was The Rock's opponent in 2001 when he faced uh, off for the WCW Championship? It was the five-time, 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 five-time WCW Champion. Andre. Booker T. Sucker. Sucker. <laughs> yes, Booker T. And Aiden. Can you dig it? Good stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I got triggered there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what building was the first to host three different SummerSlam events? What building was the first to hold three different SummerSlam events? Oh, sorry. I'm I'm first. Um, Staples Center. Moving on to Andre. Oh man, I'm gonna go with Staples too. And Aiden. I'm actually kind of with this one because I remember the first like I think the first Summer Slams I saw were at the Staples Center. Uh, the answer was. Madison Square Garden in oh. New York City. Staples was probably second. I was going to say Barclays, but I didn't want to because that's too soon. So, uh, Barclays and Staples are the next two. Would be the next yeah. two to, to have three or more. Um, <clears throat> okay, moving on now. This is this is we're getting really especially here into main events from SummerSlam. Okay, uh, the last eight SummerSlams have been main evented by one of these two men for eight years. It's been one of these two guys at least. Name those two men who have combined to each year has at least one of them has been in the main event for eight straight Summer Slams. Who are these two men? Chandler, John Cena, and I'm trying to think of who else would be in the main event picture as much as a John Cena. Um. In the last eight years. Are you counting what's a main event? Is that just going on last? Or I, is I apologize here. You want me to? I'll give some clarification on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clarification is if you are the final match of the night, that is all I am the including. Only thing. If you okay. are the only match, the the final match of the night. Oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm not sure if that include. I don't believe that this includes uh, Money in the Bank cash-ins. So I'm not including money in the bank cash. So who was, so, who was so, slated to be yeah, in that so, match? So that Randy Orton cash in Wouldn't. from a few years ago, I'm not counting that. Yeah. Okay. Just as a as a extra hint for anybody, I'm not counting that Randy Orton cash in. Yeah. So John Cena and man, 
the second one is, is, is tough for me to, to try to think of. I want to say... I want to say Triple H, but he hasn't wrestled in the in so many years. At least been in the main event picture for a SummerSlam. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give you ten seconds. Okay. Now Let's a go crowd. with five seconds. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with Triple H, even though I'm I know what's wrong. I can't think of that's. Could you repeat the head. question, please? Jesus. Uh, the last eight Summer Slams have been main evented by one of these two men. Name the two men. John Cena and Randy Orton. Moving on to Aiden. Last eight Summer Slams have been main evented by one of two men. Name the two men that have main evented the last eight Summer Slams. I know one of those John Cena for sure because it's like the first time he's never wrestled one. I'll go with Randy Orton too. He's been consistent. The answer is John Cena and Brock Lesnar. Wow. Eight, That's what I should have Eight straight Summer Slams. Okay, so speaking of John Cena and Brock Lesnar, they actually hold the record. They are tied at number one for the most Summer Slam <laughs> main events. How many have how many main events have they each main evented? How many Summer Slams have they each main evented? So they're tied at this number. You need to give me the number. I think I think six is a solid number. Moving on to Andre. So they've both main event the same amount of times? Correct. They are, mm. They're tied for number one for the most main events. I'm going to go with five. Moving on to Aiden. How many main events is the most main events for SummerSlam? John Cena, Brock Lesnar tied at this number. I'm also going to go with five. The answer is six. Chandler got that one Boom. correct. Uh, moving on now. So if Cena and Lesnar are tied at six, who is in second place or third, if you want to consider that there's two people tied for one, who is in second place and how many main events have they main evented of SummerSlam? I'm going to go with... Randy Orton at four? Question mark? Mo moving on to Andre. Summer slams? Correct. All Summer Slam questions here. <clears throat> How long has Summer Slam been a pay per view? 87, I believe. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say Hogan then. Um, I just have a feeling it's an old school guy. I don't want to say Brett. Summer Slam. Summer um, I'm going to go with Triple H, and I'm going to say four. All right, moving on to Aiden, who's in second place for the most SummerSlams main evented. And how many have they main evented? Six is the is the uh, tie between Cena and Lesnar. I'm going to go at, with Shawn Michaels at four. The answer is The Undertaker with five. Oh. Was old school. I was not the right one. No. <clears throat> uh, the record for the longest time between SummerSlam main events is 14 years. 14 years between SummerSlam main events. Who did that? Brother. It was Hogan, brother. Moving on to Andre. <sighs> it was be between Hogan and someone else, but the confidence that Chandler said Hogan is going to make me say Hogan, too. Moving on to Aiden. I agree, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is the correct answer. All very good jobs. Okay, so you we can include Hulk Hogan in this, right? Hulk Hogan is one of three men to go at least 10 years between SummerSlam main events. So Hogan went 14 years between main events. Two other guys have gone 10 years or more between SummerSlam main events. You'd go, you've got Hulk Hogan as one. Name the other two who have gone 10 years or more in between SummerSlam main events. I'm going to go with Brock Lesnar as one. And I'm going to just, before we get in, before we, I'm just going to remind everyone that Heath Slater has main evented a SummerSlam. This is where that's going to maybe come into play, just as a hint for all three of you. Hmm. That, that might change my answer. Um, 
I'll stick with I'll stick right. with Brock Lesnar for my first answer, and my second answer, I'm gonna say John Cena. Moving on to Andre. What was the question again? Three men have gone at least ten years between SummerSlam main events. You got Hulk Hogan. Name the other two who have done that. Ten years or more between SummerSlam main events. Now, Chan was got me trying to think about the connection between Cena and Slater because I don't remember Slater main eventing a SummerSlam. Oh my goodness! Oh, there's a connection. Based on our based on the rules I'm using for this, Heath Slater has main evented a SummerSlam. Then I'm going to say John Cena is one of them because Chandler obviously sh- shows that there's a connection between him and uh, and I, I want to say Brock or Kurt. Oh, goodness gracious. Brock has, I don't think the match with Ronda Rousey counted as a main event. So I'm going to say Brock and Cena. I feel like I'm just straight up stealing your answers, but I don't mean to. Aiden, to give you a hint, uh, they they got one person correct. So three men have gone ten years between SummerSlam main events. We already know it's Hulk Hogan. They got they combined got got one right, and then there's another one out there. And the hint is that Heath Slater, by the rules we're using for this game, has main evented a SummerSlam. I'm going with Brock Lesnar as the one, since um, he took time off to do his thing of like relaxing and all that. Hulk Hogan and Brock Lesnar are correct, and then you just need to give me this last one. This last one is where really that, that hint comes Bret in. Hart. That is correct. Wow, Bret Hart is the answer. That was a main Summer, event? SummerSlam 2010? 2011? Aiden, well, Bret Hart didn't take a single bump no, he, and won it was, the US It was Nexus versus Team Cena. Good job, Aiden. Oh, Aiden, snap. bonus See, points. That, that was, that was yep. the connection that youth, I had with youth Cena. Youth prevails. That was the, that I was, thought yeah. that was Survivor Series. That was, Good yep. job, that was the, Aiden. That, That's where the Heath, the Heath Slater hint came into play. And Aiden, with the Heath Nexus. Slater was part yep. of Team Nexus. Yep. That's right. Heath yeah, Slater, uh, great job, Aiden. Very good. Um, he should only get extra, extra points on the old questions. That's fine. Okay, well, let's pick it up a little bit. We got about, yeah, we got we got about eight minutes left in the show. Let's pick up the pace just a little bit here, okay? All right, so if you give me a wrong answer, don't worry. We're all having fun oh, here, right? Is Chandler still going first? Or? Chandler's still going first, uh, cool. at least for another couple questions, okay? Uh, for, yeah, just a couple more questions. Okay, how many times has the main event at SummerSlam featured a special guest referee? How many times has a main event at SummerSlam featured a special guest referee? Hmm. Three? Moving on to Andre. Four. Moving on to Aiden. Three. The answer is four. Um, okay, can you name, I'll give you a hint. One of these, one of the four special referees did it twice. Can you name these three people? The three people who, who were special guest referees. I know Triple H was one. Um, man. I'm going to say Shawn Michaels and Shane McMahon. Moving on to Andre. I literally was going to say the exact same three. I'm not even lying. Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and Shane McMahon. But to switch it up, I'm going to say Shawn Michaels, Shane McMahon, and Mick Foley. Uh, Moving on to Aiden. Aiden, they they only got one right. I know it's Triple H is one. I remember watching that one because I was alive then. Dang. Fifteen seconds. Yeah, I, I just go with uh, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Shane McMahon. I, yeah. Sid Justice. Wow. Shawn Michaels and Jesse the Body Ventura, who did two. He did the first SummerSlam main event and then also that triple threat match in 1999 between Mankind, Stone Cold, and Triple H. Uh, if you guys are right about the Triple H thing, I apologize, but I did not see him as a special guest referee. It might have been a, an, a maybe a co-main event, possibly. Wasn't he the special guest referee for when Randy Orton cashed in? He was. I, I did but not. We were, we were doing multiple. That he did not. He was not technically yeah. the special guest referee. Well, yeah, he, yeah, he was. was. Yeah, he was. For Shawn Randy Michaels o- or Triple. Or- I once again, I did not include the cash in as but a main the, event. But cash in was wasn't the main event. The main event was uh, 
Orton and or I'm sorry, Cena and Daniel Bryan. You guys, Triple H came out after. No, he was the, he, he was, was the referee the whole the time for the whole match. Really, and he screwed Daniel Bryan over, and that's how that whole thing. Raised his right, hand you, and then hit him with a pedigree. All right, and Randy I'll, I'll give I'll give Aiden uh, an extra point then. We all three got it right. I know. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I might have been Aiden off face. on that one. My apologies. Um. Okay. Heel GM. That's yeah. Uh. Okay. This is, we're going to talk a little bit. These next two couple questions are going to be about one and done main eventers, at least sort of here for SummerSlam. Uh, this we're going to switch it back to Andre going first. Okay, this former King of the Ring winner main evented his only SummerSlam in 1995. This former King of the Ring winner main evented his only SummerSlam in 1995. Uh, the original third man, Mabel. I don't know. Moving on to Chandler. In 95, this former King of the Ring winner main evented his only SummerSlam in 1995. God, Mabel is a really good guess. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with... I'm drawing a complete blank. I got nothing. All right. Give me nothing? Okay. Yeah, Aiden. I got nothing. Rapid fire here. Mabel. I got nothing. King Mabel is correct. Yeah. All right. Next question. Who was King Mabel's opponent at Wrestle uh, at uh, SummerSlam 1995? Oh, I think it was uh, Savage. Moving on to Chandler. I'm going to say Razor Ramon. Mm. Moving on to Aiden. The Macho Man. The answer was Diesel. Oh, so close. So only, close Chandler. only once has a SummerSlam main event featured a singles match between two superstars who main evented that SummerSlam and never again main evented SummerSlam. Can you guys tell me who the two wrestlers were? Two wrestlers main evented a singles match, main evented a SummerSlam together, and never did it again. The, I'll get, the hint is that it would be in the early 90s. I'll give you guys that. Didn't see Early to mid. Styles only main event one SummerSlam. Same but Cena's Cena but the... Cena's main evented more than one SummerSlam. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. Okay, yep. Okay. Oh man, I that's really tough. I'm gonna say, Golly, what was the year again? The Great Kali is incorrect. No, I said Golly. Oh, what man. year, pal? <laughs> Uh, I believe the year is 1993, but it, I, I can tell you that it's between 92 and 95. Lex Luger and Yokozuna. Moving on to Chandler. I'm going to go with Psycho Sid, Vicious Justice, whatever you want to call him, Sid. And God, Luger's a good name to throw out there. So I'm going to go with that. Sid and, Sid, Sid and Luger. Mo- moving on to Aiden. Both Lex Luger and Yokozuna also. Yokozuna and Lex Luger is the correct answer. All right, we got two questions left. All right, here we go. Uh, in 2004, the superstar, this superstar main evented his one and only SummerSlam main event in his home country of Canada. In 2004, this superstar main evented his one and only sum- SummerSlam main event in his home country of Canada. Who is this wrestler? Hint, obviously he's freaking Canadian. Uh, is or was? <laughs> I'm not going to do that Chris Benoit Moving on to Chandler My brain went straight to Chris Benoit as well Where's Chris Benoit's brain? Only Christopher Nowinski knows oh. Moving on to Aiden Same, my first thought was Chris Benoit Chris Benoit is the correct answer Name the Grand Slam winning superstar Who has main evented SummerSlam twice Twice he main evented SummerSlam But never did it in a match Consisting of less than six people so this one guy has main evented SummerSlam twice, but it was never in a match consisting of less than six people. Bret Hart. Again, Andre takes my first thought from my head, and I'm going to go with Bret Hart as well. Aiden, before you answer, I would just like to say that Bret Hart main evented a singles match against the British Bulldog for the IC championship. Oh, right. so, that is, so that would be incorrect because that was a singles match. Darn, that was my answer. Now i got to actually think about this one. You're on the right path because you you're where your brain was earlier about that uh, about that match from uh, you know like I said six or more people in both of his main events. 
I'm going to throw a weird guess out here. Wade Barrett. That is not a bad guess, but the answer is Chris Jericho. He was in the Elimination Chamber. And then also... Oh, that was a main event. And then he was, and then he was also in the that uh, Nexus versus WWE match. Yeah. Well done, everybody. So we'll we'll get those votes tallied up, and we'll get the results put up on our YouTube page. So Dre won. No need to check it out there. What'd you say? Dre won. That's a that's a spoiler. Oh jeez. I'm just glad I got that one answer right. You guys did a great job, Aiden. I give you major props for for sticking in there. That was not Same. an easy. That was not an easy thing to do at all. Uh, I did put these up before I knew for sure that you were coming, so so these guys were at an advantage in some ways, but you did a good uh, job of kind of deciding whose answer might be right, so I, I do give you a lot of credit that for that. Uh, but we got to get out of here. Our, the show is over. I appreciate everyone listening. That was, a, that was a really fun trivia segment. My apologies for getting the, the one question wrong about Triple H being a special guest referee. Yeah, if you're going to host trivia, yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. do better next yeah, time. Yeah, That's yeah. all. Sorry. Just do better. Jerks. Don't pull a Triple H on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, uh, the show is over, but we want you to make sure you follow us on social media. Yes, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at the Schmozcast. All right, folks, see you next week. Woo!